guys, you want to see how to make some really cool cornhole boards? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, we're going to sand the drips off these cornhole boards. So we're going to use a four inch grinder with 80 grit sandpaper to sand the, the drips off the bottom. Um, you're going to need a dust mask and uh, I would use some sort of glasses just to protect your eyes. So you can get this set up at Home Depot or any big box store. It comes with uh, a hard backing and your locking nut to go on your grinder. Also what I like to do is I like to bunch up probably about three or four sanding disc on here. It just makes it a little softer and it just it's easier to take the drips off. So what I'll do is I'll just show you how easy it's to put back on. And there you go. One thing before I start, I'm just gonna let y'all know, I like to go across the drips to take all the highs off and then come back and then hit it again just to get it smooth. Okay, now that we got the, all the drips sanded off our board, I have a very special guest, one of our former students, Whitney. She's with Tropical Epoxy in Key West. And is that right? No, I'm in Marathon, Florida. Okay, Marathon. Actually. Okay, Marathon, Florida. <laughs> I, uh, I, I took Rhonda's class last year, her professional epoxy countertop course, and I started my business just after that, and it's done pretty well in the last year, so I, I owe a lot to Rhonda and Kenny. He's going to help us through prepping the boards here and getting them ready to moisture vapor barrier them to waterproof them with the Red Guard. All right, so what we're going to do now, what I like to do, and do you do this to yours? Do you I tape it? I actually don't do this. Okay. <laughs> because when you tape it, and then you can make sure that this is gonna cover your epoxy, you're not gonna get red guard on it and then have to wipe it off. And so on the corner, start it around there. That way it's mm -hmm. easier to cover, and then that way it can, you can bend it. So you wanna make sure that you put the tape right on the edge of the epoxy. The red guard gets right to the edge and you don't have a void from the MDF so you don't have any penetration with the water. See, it takes a little bit longer to do it this way than just slap on the red guard, but it gives you a good crisp line. Yeah. And then also you don't see the red guard just like little yeah. picky boos. Okay. And it doesn't take very long. You know, once you, you get it on the corner, it's you got it on there. So check this out. So what I'll do is I'll get a piece of tape that's about, meh, probably about a foot long or so. And then I cut it. But what I do is I split it right down the middle or try to as much as I can. Okay, so it's a thinner piece. I can really work on getting that where it really works down into it. You usually take a couple pieces to go all the way around. And see, look how pretty that is. How that just finishes it. It's easier if you take it off the side. Move this so it's not bothering you. See how a lot easier that is? Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> that's, that's the secret to life. <laughs> Do you see how if you had a big piece of tape trying to get that. No, it'll bunch up. Right, and right? it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh yeah, I see you go over the edge. Right. Mm -mm. This way you can get this whipped out in a few minutes, and once you get the hang of it, well, shoot, you could do that in no time. Okay, the reason why we're red guarding these particular sets of cornhole boards is because it is just regular MDF. If we were using the Medex MDF, which is a water resistant, you don't have to, but because this is regular MDF, we are gonna red guard it. The other thing too, what I recommend is that you use some gloves with this stuff. Okay, do you do the same trick? Do you leave the roller I in do. the bucket? You know who I learned that from? Who is that? I learned that from Rhonda. There you go. <laughs> so you want a fun fact? Leave your roller in the bucket, that way you don't have to waste rollers. Yeah. And then when you're ready to go, 
you can put it on there, stick the, the roller in there, and voila, it's ready to go. So here you go, you can get that side, and I'll do this one. So you just wanna coat it. You really wanna get a good coat on it. And now that you've got the mask of the tape here, you don't have to really worry about your edges, so you can go right ahead and just coat everything. And the way that I do it is I put two coats of this. So we're gonna wait until it turns red. Once it turns red, we'll put our second coat and we'll be good to go. All right, guys, we've done put the red guard on and we're ready to install the frames and the legs. Before we get started, I want to introduce my guest. He's come from the class. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Everybody, I'm Keith McGinnis from Eagle, Nebraska. Uh, I'm here in Seguin, Texas with RK3 Designs for the Pro Class. The name of my company is uh, KCDC Designs and uh, I'm excited to be here and anxious to help out where I can. All right, well, great. He's gonna help me out today. We're gonna put uh, the frames on and just to give you kind of a rundown of what we're gonna be using today, we are gonna be using Craig pocket hole screws, inch and a quarter for the soft, uh, it's soft plywood. You're gonna be, you're gonna need a half inch drill bit with a drill couple clamps. We use carriage bolts, half inch. You'll need some washers and nylon lock nuts. Also, we're gonna be putting lights for the cornhole boards. You buy these on Amazon. They'll be in the description below. And then what I use instead of a socket set, I have an impact with a three quarter inch socket and a pair of channel locks. We put a final coat on the frames off camera so you didn't have to see that boring footage but you can use anything you want to seal the frames up just to help it give it a longer life there'll be a link in the description below all right so what we're going to do first is i made my frames half an inch smaller than the cornhole board itself just so the lights they'll fit nice and neat so what we're going to do is make sure that our frame is half an inch all the way around I'll let you check your side and then we'll, we'll clamp it in the middle. So right there, we're gonna use the table and we'll be able to clamp it down just a little bit. How does that look? I'm good. Okay. So let me double check my side. And, and the thing that you wanna make sure is it goes to the outside edge of the frame. Put the clamp in the middle and you can feel the, the table, yeah. Right so go ahead and just clamp that down. All right, so that looks good. One other thing that you wanna make sure is that the, the frame doesn't bow and you just got a good reveal all the way around. So just that's one thing that you wanna make sure you check. So what I like to do is now that I got my, uh, my clamps on, I'm gonna go ahead and go and do the, the two outside on the short pieces. And another thing guys, when you're doing this, you don't have to make sure it goes too far down because you can go through the board and pop up and that can be a problem. Okay, now you can pop those off. So now you got your frame attached. It's nice, nice and tight that way. It's not going anywhere. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the legs on and we're gonna measure two and a half inches to the center of the hole. Once we have that established, you wanna make sure that you have a scrap piece of wood to put on the backside of your form and then you wanna clamp it. So what that's gonna do is it's not gonna allow you to have a blowout or, or splintering when you go all the way through. Right through there, and you can see it leaves a nice clean edge for the outside. So that being said, we're gonna go over to the next side and we're gonna do the same thing. That looks good. We'll get the vacuum, vacuum this up, that way we don't have any messes. 
So you're gonna use carriage bolt, a washer for the spacer, and a nylon lock nut. So you're gonna put the carriage bolt in first, then you're gonna put the washer for the spacer. Oh, gotcha. Which is giving you that pivot point, so to speak. It's gonna allow you so you can move the legs up and down. Right. And what I like to do at this point is make sure that the legs move freely and there's not gonna be any rubbing on the board itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a hammer and hit that carriage bolt in there. So the other thing with this soft wood, you always wanna put a backup on there just to kinda hold it. That way it doesn't spin out. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna tight it to, tighten it down just to where it's snug and where it doesn't fall. And see how pretty that sits? And that's all you gotta do. And then you just rinse and repeat on the other side. Hold that for a backup. It could be a little tighter. But that washer gives you a nice separation from the frame and the legs. And then that just sits nice and pretty. All right. So we're gonna do the same thing what we did here to the next board. Okay, now we're gonna install the lights. The lights come with two sets of rope lighting, battery powered, clips to clip on the outside of the, of the board. It does come with some screws that come with it, but the screws are so small, they, they go through the hole. So I ended up going to Home Depot and getting some lathe screws. And it has a big pan head that you can see right here. And it doesn't allow the screw to go through it. And it just attaches a lot, a lot better. And that, I like that much better than the screws that it comes with. As you can see, they're very small. Okay, so what I do first is I drill a hole on the top side where the hole is and I just offset it just on one side of the of the board and I usually go off my right I guess camera facing left and I try to go to the bottom of the board as possible so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that on there I just kind of eyeball it And that's where the, the rope lighting is going to go through. Set the battery pack and the circle inside the frame. And I kind of just stretch this out and I run the lighting through the hole. And that hole is half an inch also. So I'll stop it when the connection gets right to that edge. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wrap this around. Yeah, this one we can put on. The next one is gonna be here where it overlaps. And then we're gonna work it all the way around and stretch it. That way it stretches around. Gotcha. We're gonna put one screw in there to hold it. Okay, that's all you gotta do. And then we're gonna stretch the rope lighting and we're gonna install four clips per side. Two, 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 two. Yep, and three on the ends. So I like to come right about there. And on these, the same thing, you just wanna make sure that it's just- Turn you good and tight? Yep. The other thing you wanna make sure is that the clips aren't on the lights. You see what I'm saying? It just- Yeah, that you're not pinching the, yeah, the light Yeah, you're just not itself. pinching the light itself or the light bulb. So then, yeah, I'll just kind of put it so right there. Right mm -hmm. okay. And then we'll just put one kind of in the middle. I'll offset it. Doing three here? Yep, three here. What we'll make sure though on the center one is that it's offset from the screw. That way you're not getting in the bind. From the pocket screw. From the pocket right screw on the back side, okay. correct. Okay, you tight? Yep. So that half inch ledge is working out great because it just allows that light to just sit right there on that ledge. Right, and then, so what I found after doing this is that then you won't have something that's going to catch the light when you're carrying them yep. or or you're playing on you know if you're playing outside and you, you rub up against it it's you're not going to get caught okay so on the top side they only give you a certain amount of clips 
So what, what I ended up doing, figuring out for myself, is I'll put one on the end, and then instead of putting one on the middle, I'll come back and I'll double up the lighting right here like this. And that way it holds it all together and you're not gonna have, you won't be in a bind. Yep. Yep, just a little, a little more. Okay, and there you have it. Now you have a, your set of lights, everything is nice and flush and everything looks really good. Okay, so for the next part, we're gonna use five clips for the circle, for the hole. The other thing I like to do is tear that little plastic thing apart okay. because they're always too small. So if you see there, look, you can't, if, if it was connected still, you couldn't put the clips on there and, right. and be where it needs so to where it looks snap good. that right there and yet you're not going to be yeah, snapping it's, the lights. It's, you're not messing up the lights because all it is, is is like a little piece of plastic that's just holding it together. Okay. So what I like to do is because you're throwing, you when you're throwing boards, you don't want to put the brake on the back side. You put it on the front. I'll put my clips on and then I will just kind of eyeball it and I'll start with the one in the back and I'll just make sure that it's just on the inside of being flush. So and then I'll put, yeah, bit, just so inset it. it. Yeah, so if they come in, it's not gonna knock it off. Yep. Gotcha. So okay. you just wanna inset it just a little bit. Great. And then so on this now, you might have to, because it's, it's plastic, you have to make sure that it's not gonna be in the way of the light okay. of the cornhole board. Yep. Yep, and then we'll put one right there. And then right on that last one. So see, if you were trying to keep it with that plastic piece on there, right, it wouldn't set right. Right. All right, so one thing I like to do is I like to put double-sided uh, double tape on the back side of the, of the controller. And I just put a little strip on there. And that's just gonna help it from once I screw it down, that way it doesn't want to flop. You want another keeper for those loose wires? Nope, so this is what we're gonna do. I have white tape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure, I'll bundle all this up. So I'm gonna make sure that this is all bundled up nice and neat. I'm gonna wrap tape around there, and then I'm gonna stick this down and then put a screw in it. So I'll wrap these all these wires so they don't get hung up on anything. It's just looped. And see how that just gives it a lot cleaner look. Voila. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is we'll peel the double-sided tape off and then I'll just kinda set it to where it's kinda out of the way but accessible. And then one thing you have to really pay attention to is when you're putting this screw down you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because you will break it because I've done that. So you just want to make sure that it's nice and snug. And this will open and close freely. So now that we got them all installed, I got some batteries here. I like to double check it before it, I take it off the table. There's a button on the, on the, on the controller where you can turn them on change different colors. Also, there is a remote that comes with it and that everything works. So you take the battery out, set it back in, and then you close the door. And that's how you install the lights. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. We wanna say a special thanks to our guest who made guest appearance. Remember, leave us a comment below. Let us know maybe what you would like to see us do a video on in the future. You can get all of these products on our website, rk3designs.com. We also have an online course, online epoxypro.com. Check it out. And guys, remember, until next time. Don't be scared. Don't, don't be, be scared. scared. Move, move forward, forward and, and be, be creative. creative. Thanks, guys.